I'll give it one more minute before we start. Okay, so I will get started. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for joining today's uh, Explore SDSU from electrical and the computer engineering department. Uh, if you have any questions, please type it in the chat window and I will address it as we move along or some of the questions I will address them towards the end of the presentation. And please mute yourself during the presentation. Um, and then you can raise your hand uh, if you have any questions, as I said. So I'm gonna dive into the presentation first. And towards the end of the presentation, I will share with you some of the tricks uh, how to explore the websites, find the information that you need. Uh, so that will be what we'll be talking about today. So to start with, I, again, I want to thank you all for joining today's uh, uh, session. And hopefully this session will provide you with information that you need to uh, make a decision um, to, uh, to join SDSU for the next couple of years. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So let me um, start by talking some technology, you know, um, there's so many things that we rely on today in terms of electrical and electronics communication and so on. But I don't know if you have ever heard about this concept of wireless power. So this is one of the divisions or one of the uh, disciplines that we teach. Uh, in fact, we do research in electric engineering. Over a hundred years ago, Tesla had this dream of sending power wirelessly instead of uh, plugging in to charge your device. Of course, that progress has been slow over the past 100 years. Only in the past 10 years, we have been making this available. And uh, nowadays you can buy devices that you can charge your cell phones, laptops, or even electric vehicles without a cable. And the market in this area was estimated to be anywhere from 20 billion to $50 billion per year over the next couple of years. So what do you do with, with this wireless charging? As I mentioned, you can charge your phones, you can charge your laptop, but most interestingly, you may, not, you may want to know that you can charge a device inside your body. Uh, why would you charge a device in your body? Uh, many of you probably have heard of a pacemaker. A lot of people with heart failure would install a pacemaker inside the body. The pacemaker is operated by a battery and the battery will run out in a couple of years. What would you do with it? And traditionally, you would have to do another operation to replace the battery or the device. But in the future, you can simply charge the device inside the body so that you don't have to do operation, which is painful and dangerous. So this is something that we do. However, when you charge your electric vehicle or your device, you may be concerned about what, what happens to the electrical field, magnetic field. Would that damage my tissues? Would create a cancer? So we do studies, we do simulations. And so we build models. If you look at this, Picture, this is a model that we built in a on the computer that we can simulate the field and we can simulate the kind of damage that will happen to a human body or animal or anything that you look at this, for example, you can see how the electromagnetic field, magnetic field change over time. And what happens, somebody sits inside a vehicle, he would experience some sort of electromagnetic field. Well, not only just wireless charging, but if you look at communication, if you look at uh, cell phone devices, laptops, anything that transmits signals, power, then you can do all this. You can see what's happening inside the animal. So what I'm saying that all these things can be done theoretically, mathematically, computationally, or by building hardware. 
when you study electric engineering, you will be able to have access to this knowledge and build self a confidence to do anything that you want. So in our department, we offer uh, two programs right now when we're gonna come up with a, another program I'm gonna explain to you. So the first degree program is BS in electrical engineering. It's 120 units, semester units program, which includes general education required and elective classes. And the second program is BS in computer engineering, uh, also 120 20 units. And we'll be offering a com degree completion program. And this is for students who have already studied in, in the community college, but not able to join our program or another program. And they want to do a part-time basis, come to our campus on an uh, online basis to finish the degree. So this is another program which will be offered by 2022, um, the earliest maybe um, on, in the fall of 2022. In addition to the bachelor's of science program, we also offer uh, graduate, pro graduate degree programs. One of them is MS or master's in science in electrical engineering, which is 30 unit uh, based program. And you can choose to do thesis, research or project. We also offer uh, online master's program in electrical engineering. The reason we offer online because we find many students after getting bachelor's degree, they find a job. So they will be off campus in another area. So they want to do a graduate degree, how will they do it? So they do it online. So that's why we do this program, which is available, it's quite popular than I have expected. And we will be offering uh, both online and in-person master's program in computer engineering. And the in-person was started in 2022 fall and then the online was started in 2022 uh, spring. So this computer engineering master program will be a popular program as I uh, predict right now. And which is something after you got your bachelor's, uh, you can think about. Because nowadays, a lot of engineering work require knowledge beyond the bachelor's degree. If you want to move on to a research or faculty position or research in a corporate, you can also think about a doctorate degree program. We offer um, a joint doctorate degree program with UCSD. Um, this degree program, uh, or uh, is five-year program after bachelor's or four years uh, or four years after bachelor's or maybe three years after you get your master's. So you can apply to the program uh, even before you get your bachelor's degree um, that you can use into that program. Uh, we also offer a master's degree program in engineering. This is an interdiscipl interdisciplinary program offered with the College of Business. Uh, this is for professionals who have five years of working experience. And we're working on getting our own independent doctor's program. If you look at our department, we have 24 faculty right now, um, and we're gonna have, have add a one more um, chair professor in next year. We have faculty uh, dedicated, not only teaching, but also in research. So our research expenditure exceeds uh, $2 million, and we're gonna expect uh, to reach 3 million this year. Uh, most of faculty uh, will do research in addition to what they teach in their field of expertise. We offer a few specialized area, areas. Um, well, students will get to work on, for example, we have uh, programs in communications, power generation, distribution, biomedical, transportation, entertainment, consumer goods, all, all kinds of, that you can think about in electrical and computer engineering. Uh, our graduates will work on different aspects uh, in the engineering and uh, including the software engineering, electrical, electronics, uh, power, and so on. Uh, if you get into our major program, uh, in either EE or Compi, uh, you would uh, have to meet certain criteria. For example, you have to complete with a C or better in six different classes. That includes EE210, e e uh, Compute 160, Math 150, 151, phys Physics 196, and 195. Uh, you cannot take these classes as a credit non credit. You have to get a letter grade, which is C or better. Uh, you have to have an overall GPA of 2.7 by the time you declare your major. How do you reach that point? Well, we think that you need to think 
very strategically about taking which class in order. For example, you can take some G classes, um, humanities, arts, science, and so on, but mix them with math, physics, so that you don't get one semester with tough classes, another semester with all easier classes. And easier means some classes are easier for some people, but difficult for other, for other people. So you have to think about your strengths, like math, physics, G, and so on. So mix them in every semester. So you, you then will get a good grade in all of them. So make sure you um, maintain a 2.7 GPA and get a sale better in the, um, major, in the class, uh, major preparation classes. Um, build a good habit to study. Uh, you know, don't skip lectures, don't skip labs, don't skip exams, don't skip homeworks. Um, working in groups with other people and focus on your study and focus on exams, uh, focus on preparation, all these good habits you have to build over the years. Once you pass your major, you can choose, you can, um, you have to take some required classes. For example, 4 times 420, control six control systems signals systems digital signal processing and so on. and then you move on to take some elective classes elective means you have a abundance of classes that you can choose from but you can choose the classes that you're interested uh, there are two ways to look at the elective one is that if you're interested very very interested in a particular area then you can choose that class in that all classes in that area for example if you're interested in power you can choose classes that in power area, for example, you can choose power electronics, power electronic lab, power systems, and so on. If you're interested in communications, you can choose classes that are all in communications, or you're interested in microwaves, uh, magnetic, and so on. Another way to look at it is that if you are if you are not so sure about which area you're interested, then you can sample different classes. You can take one class in communication, one class in power, one class in uh, we LSI and so on. And then you can figure out which area is more interesting to you. And then you can focus on in your future work uh, when you go on to your graduate degree studies. So where would you find a job after graduation? Well, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, choose to go to a company to become an associate engineer, become an engineer, become a staff engineer, senior engineer in the pathway. Uh, and then you might choose to pursue to a graduate studies uh, or uh, that you want to, uh, to go to a different area. For example, we have people who become lawyers, uh, who become uh, government employees. So it all depends on where you are um, interested, where you interested are, are after a couple of years. Uh, so you'll be trained in different areas. Uh, you take your knowledge in uh, certain bridges and you handle rapid changes, like learn new stuff uh, in the future. And of course, finally, you have to build a good ethics. You know, don't try to plagiarize, don't copy some other people's work, but do your own work. Build your communication skills, teamwork, and creativity through this process that you can handle any kind of work. You know, for my personal experience, uh, when I studied my undergrad, we were studying only one language that was fortunate. Nobody's using that these days. So we have to learn C, C++, Java, Python ourselves. So, and then we can teach students from what we have learned. So you'll be doing the same thing. Who knows what happens 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that will be a different set of skills that you have to build. So with that, I'm saying you have to uh, build your knowledge and skills. Uh, you complete general education, build your communication skills, problem solving skills, and your intellectual skills over the period of study uh, in our program. So uh, this is a set of things that you have to be careful, that you have to earn enough general education credits, which includes like humanities, arts and science and so on. Then you will have to finish the required class, which included biology, mathematics, computer engineering, and electrical engineering, which also includes the physics, right? And laboratories, you have to select six units of laboratory units, and then you choose elective classes, and finally you finish a senior design project, two semester project design. Uh, the field of uh, specialization I mentioned already earlier, um, there are many of them, but in our particular area, we uh, focus on wireless communication, digital signal processing, electromagnetics, radio frequency, antennas, 
microelectronics, embedded system, robotics, uh, power system, computer networks, and image processing, uh, digital systems, and so on. So these are the areas when you choose your electives. You can, as I said, you can either choose one area or you can sample different areas. So it's really up to uh, what you want to do. You, you might want to ask why we come to SDSU. I think there are top reasons you want to do here. For example, we are IBEC accredited degree, uh, which is not the case for some other universe, universities. Uh, many of you are local, uh, so which means you want to choose a good degree program. We are the one. We have professors who are dedicated in their field. We have many IEEE -E fellows, SAE fellows, which means they have built uh, their reputation, world renowned experts in their field. Uh, many of our professors are accessible, available, uh, and responsive. We will help you. We have help available. We have tutoring, free tutoring service. We give a MESA exam program. Uh, we also have student, uh, uh, many other services, advising and tutoring available for students who might struggle in any given class or any, anything else. We have a, local, uh, a lot of local high tech industry. You might hear Apple, Qualcomm, SDGNE, uh, Spayball, uh, um, uh, Cubic, and so on, these companies. And we, we offer senior design projects with product, practical experience. We do have laboratories that uh, has uh, uh, new uh, facilities that you can, uh, you can access. And, uh, and you, you have the opportunity to transition to a graduate degree, uh, either master's or- I don't know if my thing is not working. Uh, can you mute yourself? Uh, so when you come to a degree, uh, a lot of things you should do, for example, you can participate in an undergraduate research program. We offer the summer research experience program for un undergraduate students. You can earn uh, $3,000 to $5,000 over the summer for 10 weeks, and then you get a research experience, and you can uh, get a feeling of what it means to do research as a graduate student. Uh, join a professional society, IEEE, uh, and, and so on. Uh, have a professional goal. What do you want to do? You want to become a researcher, you want to become an engineer, you want to become a, a lawyer, or even some student trans transition to medical medical field. Um, take advantage of an uh, international exchange program and uh, participate in some national competitions or robotics competitions, IEEE -E competitions, future energy competitions, uh, all that you can mention. The thing that you should avoid is that don't overlap. We have found a lot of students coming in with ambition to want to graduate sooner, so they take 18 credit, 21 credit, which is not recommended. Take the credit like a 12 minimum or 15, 16 as an average uh, so that you can get good grade. Good grade is more important than getting graduate with a low GPA. If you have to graduate with, a, uh, you have to get a 2.7 GPA you got in order to declare your major. So don't take too many classes, especially when you work part-time, uh, balance your work life and study. So don't overload, that's critically important. Don't skip a class. You know, something people think, oh, this class is difficult, let me take it later. But if you do that, that might um, delay your graduation because you skip some prerequisites. Many of the class have to be taken in sequence. So upon graduation, you work locally, you find a job, you go to Northern California, or you go to another state, or even the international. We have students going to Germany, India, China, Brazil, or Mexico. So we have uh, alumni all over the place, Middle East, as you can name. Um, a lot of students do get a lot of benefits you know, uh, uh, to uh, uh, when they get a job. So we have students always often ask, um, should I find a job or should I do a master? Well, it depends. Um, some students are good in research. I would recommend you to do further study. Some students are um, uh, needed to earn the money to raise their family. So maybe find a job first and get a feel how it, how it is and then take it in one or two years and then decide. And you can come back part-time for a graduate degree or you can part, come back full-time for a graduate degree. Uh, would you want to stick into electrical and computer field or you want to go to uh, physics, or you want to go to mechanical, or you want to go to medical law, that's really up to what you feel in a couple of years. So, there's one thing I want to uh, remind you, there's a general catalog, 
which right now you can access online. I'll, I'll show you where to get it. So that general catalog has all the information you need uh, to, to, to study and to maneuver uh, over the program and the campus and uh, over a couple of years. Go to advising. Don't feel shy because that's where you get information. If you miss that information, you might you know, take one more semester to graduate, which is no good. So go to uh, University Advising Center. You can get information. Right now, everything is virtual. You can, you can call in or you can uh, make an appointment. So get to know what your GE requirement, your graduation requirement. Um, go to web portal, which is where you can see your degree audit. And you can always see what, which class is missing from your uh, degree evaluation so that you can write down what you need to do next semester or even next year. So get a plan. And then visit the professor's office hours and tell them this is what you want, what they see. They can tell you some of their background and they can make good recommendations. So if anything, you have a doubt, go to your professor's office hours. And if you don't get response or if you have a trouble, come to me. Don't hesitate. I'm the department chair. So I can answer your questions. I, I'm the person who always at, at your final step, you know, anything I would address the issue. So don't worry about it. So know where you go, where the, uh, uh, the university advising, where is the free tutoring, where you can find, where you find the professor and where to find the department office, where to find department chair. So get the help you need. So with that, I want to uh, switch over to some of the information that you, want, you can maneuver. So the first thing that I would recommend is to get to this website, is sdsu.edu. This is where you can find all the information you need. For example, if you go to academics, then you can find, for example, parking information. Is that important? Of course, if you're gonna drive to the campus, that's where you're gonna find it. How, where to park and how to park, how to pay, right? Maps and directions, right? So there's all this information available. And then go to academics, this is probably more important. Where you can find, for example, advising. If you click on advising, it will bring you to where to find advising, phone numbers, email, watch your desk. This is so critical. Go to advising and uh, you, they will tell you where to go. Uh, if they cannot find it, they will find, tell you where to find the information you need. Okay, then the next thing is go to academics, go to class schedule. This is really, really important. So because this is here, for example, if you go to spring 2021, you could update, you go to find by department or you can find by subject. For example, you go to, if you want to take a math class. So you go to math department and you can find the class of say uh, 195, uh, sorry, not 195, two, uh, 151. So you can find the sections of 151. They offer many sections. You can find which section the time is good for you. So this is where you can enroll in classes, right? So if you go back to say electrical and you can find all the classes that offer by electrical engineering. What we offer, for example, computer engineering classes, electrical engineering classes, two time, for example, you can see the time, the classroom and so on. So this is where you find the class. Okay, now let me go to the next. Uh, the next one is go to this, uh, again, academics. You can go to Canvas. Now, no, the Blackboard, Blackboard is gonna go away. Canvas is where you actually log in to access all the class material, your videos, your syllabus, and when you log, when you log into Canvas, this is where you can access, again, classes. Uh, for example, if you are a student, you go to you know, one of the classes that you can see the syllabus, to, uh, and you can see your uh, videos, assignments, grades, you, you submit your grades, everything is over here. So this is uh, another important area you have to get into here. Uh, log in here and uh, you can also email professor from inside this page. Of course, you can always go to our department website, which is electrical.sdsu.edu. From here for you, the most important part are this link here is the people. Go to people and you can see we have faculty, lectures and staff. So if you go to faculty, you can find the faculty's email, phone number and the website. For example, if you go to 
uh, Professor Akshani. You can find his website information, what he's teaching, what he's doing research, his email, and he, you can even get to his uh, uh, resume and look at what he's doing. So this is where you get all the faculty. Now, if you have a question, you want to ask a professor, find his email address here or his phone number and email him or call him. Now, if you have a generic information, you don't know which professor you ask for, go to staff page. Where you can see we have um, Angelica, she's handling all the personnel like TAs in front. Go to your senior year, you want to, uh, to become a grader for a class that you have taken before like two times, three times, 300. Email Angelica saying, I want to be a grader. I have a GPA of 3.5, I want to be a grader. And, and I want, do you recommend which class that I can be a grader? So we do that over time. Uh, if you have, a, you want to find your master plan, you want how to know how, when you can uh, declare your major, or you want to transfer to all major, or, or if you don't like electrical or computer, you want to become mechanical. I, I'm fine. I'm assuming interest change over time. That's fine. Email Robin, and she will handle that. Or if you want to say, I want to buy a dial. I want to buy. I want to know what is the data sheet. I want to know what the level looks like. I don't know the which lab is open at what time email Mark, and he's the one handling the labs. Okay, so, so this is the page. Again, okay, the next important area is go to this tab, is undergraduate. So if you look at it here, I already have a link, Explore SDSU 2021. This will actually bring you to a different page, which is a YouTube that we recorded from our last meeting. So I'm gonna, not gonna open that. But if you have a, um, uh, if you wanna review what we had last time, you can go over there. Over there. And then we have a sub link for computer engineering, for example, where you have all this information. For example, uh, what do you need to do? And, and, and where you find the master plan. Okay, here you see we have a general catalog. So here, it's only the computer engineering general catalog. This only took three pages. You should read this one very carefully, especially what you need to do. For example, let me room in here. This impact, impact program, you need to complete these classes and so on. Uh, and then you look at, for example, the prerequisite. What is needed for each class? For example, computer 160, you have to finish 150 with grade C or better in order to be able to take Compute 160. So this is where you see this computing engineering catalog. You go to my map. Well, this is where you can select your catalog year. For example, you're coming in as 2021, which is not here yet. But you can certainly look at 2020. Then you can select your measure. Let me go to computing engineering. Uh, just to give you an example. Computing engineering BS, computing engineering BS here. Uh, okay, here. So then you can submit. Then it will tell you which semester you need to take which class. This is a four-year program. So if you're transfer, of course, you start from the third year. Now, what if you're missing any class from year one, year two, you'll come to year one, year two, finish all the class you need. So if you follow this, my map, you will graduate in four years. If you fail any class, you fail, then you can come back to take it in the summer if we offer it. So we don't always of a class in summer, but you would be uh, delayed by one semester if you cannot find a class in summer. So stick to this uh, my map, which is the best way to do it. Okay, let me go to another tab, which is uh, where you have this undergraduate again. We did put our master plan and a my map all in the same place. Like here, we already have my map printed for you. Uh, if you come here, you guess it's my map. Instead of downloading from that website, you can come here for electrical and a computer for 2021 because it's not available for the previous website that I'm showing you. And this master plan, well, well, and you might ask what is the difference between the master plan and my map. My map shows you the four years program, which semester you need to take which class. The master plan is something that we have to have, a, uh, have it on record. So you will finish this master plan, send it to Robin, and she will provide the signatures and we put it on your file. And it also tells you which class you need to take uh, with the electives. So the, my uh, map doesn't show what class you take as electives. So my, my master plan tells you what elective you need to put, like elective here, 
and uh, which in this master plan you need to take uh, uh, five different electrical classes you need to put here. Now, this master plan can be changed anytime. So don't worry about it. Say, oh, I elected this, uh, say, 480. Can I change it? Yes, you can change anytime uh, before you graduate. So don't worry about it. But this is sort of give you an uh, initial and then maybe a revised plan at any time. So this is my master plan. So another uh, thing you want to look at is this uh, uh, courses. Uh, because this, for example, again, I go to computer engineering. So this will list all the classes that we offer with uh, uh, the, the description of that class and also prerequisite of the classes and so on. So this is where you can find all the de description of the classes. Now, of course, you have access to you know, Google and then if you're on campus, you can always Google the more detailed syllabus, which is available from the library, uh, which is also online, but you have to search for them. Like for example, you're gonna search uh, SDSU Compi 160 syllabus, okay? So you can always find the digital library SDSU WDU. So this will give you the detailed syllabus of that class. So this is very easy to search online nowadays, right? Okay, so I already talked about the class selection and then all the classes. I think that will be the, and of course, if you have an interest to see what the student doing in their final year, you can always go to the design day and look at what kind of senior design project they're working on. So our design day this year is uh, um, May 5th, uh, May 5th, 20, this, this is for last year. This year will be May 2021, uh, May 5th, 2021. And if you want to see what they're doing live, you can always register. Uh, and this will be, uh, published on this website in a couple of days. And then you can always call in this year with a virtual format and you can uh, see the student presentations and ask questions uh, and so on. Uh, the other thing that we have is uh, over here uh, is uh, where I want to see we have, we do post job opportunities, which is on this tab. If you go to the department, we have jobs and scholarships and internships where you can see all these opportunities we posted over here. So you can um, always, uh, we'll post more opportunities as it moves on. Uh, so you will be able to look at here, you know, for example, this one, ESMO, you know, they have this job opportunity and uh, you look at um, some others, Cubic, for example, they have this job opportunities, internship opportunities and so on. So there's a lot of information available on this website. Uh, so I encourage you to come to this web website to, uh, to do it. So with that, I think that is the end of my presentation. So I will now go to um, questions and answers. I see already a long list of questions posted on the chat. Teresa, do you want to add anything? Teresa is our assistant dean. So she handles the student inquiries from the administrative, for example, you want to wish your class, you want to uh, have an issue with a professor or another student and so on, she handles that. Thank you, Dr. Me. Um, the only thing I would like to add is uh, there are various opportunities for students to engage and get involved. Um, as we are planning to come back in person in fall, that's going to be even better than what we've done in the last three semesters. Uh, we have a very strong IEEE um, student organization, as well as others. There's uh, Aztec Electric Race Car. So lots of opportunities for students to get involved, even as undergraduates, even as freshmen, uh, definitely as incoming transfers. So I would just, uh, Dr. Me gave you some very good information on um, uh, your pathway to success. I would just add to get involved. Exactly, get involved, that's important. So I see that, that Teresa already posted a few notes in the chat. Um, the catalog will be ready very soon. So by that time, my map will be ready for 2021. And uh, yes, electrical and engineering don't require chemi chemi chemistry class. So that's not required. Uh, do you have any questions uh, from the students joining today's session? If you have any, please either raise your hand or type it in the chat room. Even parents, if there's parents, no parents attending. Right. Yeah. 
while we're waiting for questions, I'll just add, um, if you're still making your decisions on which school to attend, um, of course, I might be a little biased, but SDSU is a great um, opportunity to really get involved and practice the electrical or computer um, um, uh, field um, internship opportunities, research opportunities, and basically getting experience during your undergraduate um, work to prepare you well for industry when, or grad school when um, the program is over. So, you know, just some things to, to help <laughs> as you make your decision. So another information that the, our university have already announced that in the fall, all classes will be in person. So freshmen should be able to come on campus. And, uh, uh, and also if a student have uh, a disability, for example, um, if you, uh, some students have a disability and you can always contact the Student Ability Center to request a special permission for like a, a additional time for exams or uh, access and so on. Or if you have trouble with your internet and doing virtual, some if, if, if in case some class will be virtual that you, you have difficulty in terms of uh, IT, like uh, um, internet access, and you can also request accommodation with the Student Ability Center for like a space and tools that they, they offer. Oh, so I'll see them pretty quiet today. Um, last time I remember I get a lot of questions. I don't answer today, I don't have any, uh, which is interesting. But uh, um, anyway, so if you have questions, please, um, anything that uh, you want to know. So I think if uh, no more questions, I think we can probably end the session here and uh, we'll uh, have this, we already have this session recorded and then we're gonna post it. Uh, if uh, you uh, wanted to listen again, if you were not able to attend the whole session or if you have friends, parents, family who, wanted, who wants to, um, to learn more about this, they can always come back uh, there will be different places uh, you can access the recording. One is the University SD, uh, Explore SDSU Central website. Another one is that it will be also posted on the department website as well. So feel free to uh, publicize uh, this information to your friends and family. And we'll uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the fall. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Mm,